This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, in the previous lecture, I showed you the measures of dispersion uh, for our example where it was discrete variables, uh, range, variance, standard deviation, coefficient of variation. Uh, let's do exactly the same for an example with continuous variables. Uh, and in my notes, it's example five. But example five is using the table we had in an earlier lecture for example three. So what did we have? Um, it was groups. It was naught to 500, 500 to 1,000, 1,000 to 1,500, uh, 1,500 to 2,000, 2,000 to 2,500. Uh, two and a half thousand to three thousand. And if you remember, when we calculated the arithmetic mean, when we've got groups, we let the midpoint represent the range, the group. So the midpoints are x, 250, 750, 1250, 1750, 2250, and 2750. And finally, so we can get going, the frequency, the number of observations, 1, 4, 8, 19, 14, 6. Um, the total, or sigma f, was 52. All right, well, let's look at the four uh, measures exactly in the same way as we did before. Uh, first of all, the range. Difference between the highest and the lowest. Uh, although when it's groups, for this bit, we ignore these midpoints. We take the top of the highest range, which was 3,000, and the bottom of the lowest group or range, which was zero. So the range is 3,000. So again, a really easy one, but again, not very common because it's easily distorted. You know, if there's something unusually high or low. And so much more important, the variance. Well, we do exactly the same as we did in the previous example. Now remember, we had worked out earlier, when I went through example three before, we'd worked out the arithmetic mean or x bar it was 1817. And so for the variance, just as we did when it was discrete variables, we take the difference between the observations and the arithmetic mean. And here we do use the midpoints. So 250 away from 1817. It's minus 1567. 750, as against 1817, is minus 1067. 1250 from 1817 is minus 567. 1750 is minus 67. 2250 minus 1817 is plus 433. And 2,750 is going to be, I, bet it, I think, plus 9, if you let me just check. 2,750 minus 1817. Yes, plus 933. We want the average, but just as before, because of the sign problem, we square them and then take the average. And here, I'll do two steps in one. I'll square them x minus x bar squared, to take the average, we'll multiply each of those by the frequency. And then when we've got the total, we can divide by sigma. So let's do both steps in one. 1567 squared times the frequency of 1 is 2455489. 1067 squared times the frequency of 4 
is 4553956. 567 squared, frequency 8, comes to 2571912. 67 squared times frequency 19, 85291. 433 squared, frequency 14, is 2624846. And finally, 933 squared, frequency 6, 5222934. And so the total of those are sigma f x minus x bar squared. Oh heavens, 2455489 plus 4551912, I hope I've added these up right. 1751442 Uh, and so to get the average, the variance, just like before, sigma f x minus x bar squared over sigma f 1751442 uh, over 52 comes to 2551914. Three, six, eight, one, six. So there is the variance. However, as I said in the last lecture, exactly the same. Although this is a measure of spread, the bigger the spread, the bigger the variance will be. Um, the units have changed, you know, originally everything was in dollars. Because of the squaring, this is like squared dollars. So to get back to the same units, the standard deviation or little sigma is the square root of the variance. So here it's the square root of 336816. Root three, three, six, eight, one, six. It comes to five, eight, zero. Just let me check. The square root three, three, six, eight, one, six. Yes, five, eight, zero. And that is dollars, in fact, because the differences were in dollars. Square them, it was square dollars. We square rooted. Uh, we're back to dollars. Okay, let me make uh, one little point here. Depending on what textbooks you may or may not have, you may see another formula for calculating that, which comes to exactly the same figure and just isn't needed. What I've done there is as quick as any way. You don't get given formulae for this in the exam. And so that's all you need to do Square, average, get the variance, take the square root. We've got the standard deviation. Uh, finally, and if it wasn't clear before, it should be more clear now, the need for this, the coefficient of variation Although the spread, the standard deviation is 580, again on its own, is that big or is it small? You know, I can't remember what it was in the previous example, but in the previous example, it was a hell of a lot smaller. Of course it was, because all the observations were a lot smaller. And so, to give perhaps a better idea of the magnitude, it's the standard deviation divided by the arithmetic mean. The standard deviation, 580. The arithmetic mean, We'd calculated earlier was 1817. And so the coefficient of variation point three two. 
So there we are, measures of average, measures of dispersion. So it means being quick with your calculator, but otherwise I don't think it's too bad.